Hello everyone, um, thanks for inviting me to this uh, panel discussion. I'm um, part of the General Students Committee at the University of Marburg and I'm also involved in a group called Free Education Movement Marburg. Um, I was invited to give you a brief overview of, um, well, of the current situation in Germany and also the developments uh, regarding the struggle for free education. And I want to begin by giving you a brief overview of uh, what the education system actually looks like in Germany. Um, there are 16 federal states which make up Germany and each federal state is in charge for its own uh, educational policies. Um, higher education is predominantly public in Germany um, but um, policies are also changing and the influence of profit driven uh, interests is also increasing within the education system. Um, we can observe that um, through various uh, tendencies, um, for example, the private sector is being is being pushed by um, federal state governments, but also by a national government. Um, we also observe budget cuts and uh, experience an increasing dependency on uh, private investors. So there, there are many institutions who increasingly become in depend become dependent uh, on generating funds um, from private investors. So faculties, consequently faculties who are unable <coughs> to attract private investment uh, are forced to shut down. Just recently in, in, in Marburg, for example, a faculty um, which um, does research uh, in Egypt, I'm not sure it's Egyptology or something, um, they had to, they were forced to shut down, for example. Um, yeah, besides that, there's the increasing, uh, we, can, um, we can observe an increase in uh, commercials, advertising uh, on campus. And um, a bachelor master system was introduced uh, in recent years, not just in Germany, but across Europe, uh, which is part of the Bologna process. Um, and uh, so, so previously we had a diploma degree which included a bachelor and a master degree, uh, but now that diploma degree was split up, so now we have two, for first the bachelor and then the master, and by doing so, by implementing those uh, new courses, uh, they also introduced uh, another selection process between bachelor and master, because not everybody who does a bachelor degree automatically qualifies for uh, master courses. Um, besides that, yeah, those were the general tendencies, right, um, within the education system in Germany. And um, besides that, tuition fees were introduced in, in the year 2005-2006 uh, in several federal states. But uh, due to massive protests, um, now there are only two federal states actually left who charge general tuition fees for people who want to access uh, university. Okay, so that was the first block. Um, coming up, I'll still, I will still in the, uh, give you a brief overview of um, the historical developments regarding uh, tuition fees in Germany. Um, in another section, I will point out um, well the differences between uh, state, in-state students and out-of-state students, since um, um, I was told that this was very uh, significant for you. And uh, last but not least, I want to point out why we think that the struggle for free education is very important and why free education is actually essential. So let me continue by giving you uh, the um, historical overview. Um, between the 15th century, when the first uh, universities were founded, um, up until the 1950s, uh, universities were rather elitist institutions, only a very small minority. Uh, was accessing them and it was normal to be charged uh, well a fee, a significant fee. Um, in the 1960s uh, they were marked by major educational reforms. These reforms resulted uh, in the establishment of so-called mass universities. Right? So a much broader po population actually uh, went to universities and why was that so? because uh, the industry required more people um, which, with uh, significant skills, who are highly skilled, um, to enter the labor market, um, so-called human capital. 
And um, as you probably know, the 1960s and 70s were also marked by massive student movements. Um, and those student movements did not just formulate radical uh, social criticism, but they also fought for the abol abolition of uh, tuition fees. So in the struggle, students at the University of Hamburg, they organized the boycott, boycott of tuition fees in the year 1970. And uh, they were successful. Many people actually joined the boycott. And in the end, um, authorities were forced um, to abolish tuition fees. Um, first at the University of Hamburg, but then uh, consequently also at the rest of Germany. So since the 1970s uh, there, were, there, was no more tuition, there were no more tuition fees charged at universities in Germany. In the 1980s and 1990s uh, the neoliberal uh, discourse kicked off uh, also in Germany which led to many social reforms uh, destabilizing the public uh, social welfare system. And in the mid-1990s, the introduction of tuition fees was on the political agenda again. Uh, consequently, long-term study fees were introduced uh, in the federal state of Baden-Württemberg in 1997. And in the coming years, these kind of fees were also introduced in many other federal states. So those students who took longer uh, to finish their studies than uh, officially planned uh, were charged fees and the others could still study um, for free. Um, yeah, in 2005 the Constitutional Court ruled that the introduction of tuition fees is in conformity with the Constitution. That was a very significant step in 2005. And only one year later general tuition fees were introduced in various uh, federal states across the country. At the same time uh, long-term study fees also were increased significantly. And also in Hesse, the federal state where I study, general tuition fees were introduced in winter 2007. And Hesse was one of the, it was actually the only federal state where non-EU students were supposed to pay 1,500 euros, while students from EU states, including students from Germany, were charged 500 euros. So in Hesse, the, the, the federal government was the only government that attempted to differentiate between students coming um, from Germany and students uh, from outside the EU. Um, yeah, the introduction of tuition fees uh, led to massive protests, uh, not just in Hesse, but also outside Hesse, but they were uh, particularly strong uh, in Hesse. Universities were occupied, ra railway stations and uh, highways were blocked, mass rallies were organized very frequently and uh, what else? Yeah, boycotts of tuition fees were uh, also initiated. On one hand, uh, these acts of resistance and protest, they resulted in more than 2,000 um, people, mostly students, uh, being detained and arrested uh, in Hesse alone within one year. On the other hand, the pr perseverance shown by the protesters unfolded enough pressure to keep, it, to keep this issue of tuition fees on the public agenda for many months and even years. And yeah, uh, many, many students um, were also wearing these kind of sweatshirts or t-shirts where it says Für Solidarität und Freie Bildung, which means uh, for solidarity and free education. So those were very popular back then in the year 2006-2007. And sometimes, even nowadays, you see people wearing them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, due to those massive protests, the issue uh, was kept on the public agenda. And in the end, political parties profiled themselves uh, by picking up the demand of the students for freely accessible education. And this, in the end, led to the abolition of general tuition fees in almost all of the federal states in Germany. Only two states still charge general tuition fees, and those are uh, Bavaria and Lower Saxony. Okay, um, so the organizers uh, of this panel discussion, they actually asked me, well, um, what are the differences between in-state students and out-of-state students? Is, are there any politics, um, any differentiation be being made uh, between students 
who come from a particular federal state and wants to study there and students who come from outside the state or even outside the country. Um, well, usually in Germany uh, universities don't differentiate between students from different states or regions of the world. So as long as you speak the German language you and you have the particular qualifications, that's A-levels usually, um, you can enter university no matter where you're from and you are not charged any fees except for those states where they still have uh, tuition fees. So in recent history the government of one federal state called Rhineland-Pfalz they considered to actually introduce to, they considered to only charge students who come from out of, from out of state. Um, but in the end they found out that this uh, could be considered to be against the constitution so after that um, that was not on the agenda anymore, it was not an issue. So there's no real categorization of students when it comes to charging tuition fees in Germany. Nonetheless students from outside the EU are only allowed to labor a particular number of days per year and they need to prove that they have enough money on their, on their account so that um, they could cover their own medical expenses just in case. So there is some sort of discrimination still taking place, but on another level. Yeah, and last but not least, I want to um, take this opportunity to shortly explain why uh, free education is essential to us. Well, to us, the struggle for free education is closely related to the actual understanding of education. So what means education to us? To us, education primarily enables one to better understand our social environment, as well as our world as a whole. It is about achieving a better understanding of how things function and correlate within the social context. After all, it is exactly that social context which defines our perception of the world. Therefore, free education is the basis for the emancipation of every human being. Yeah. And we believe that everybody should um, be able to emancipate themselves. And for that, it's just, free education is just uh, essential. But free education does not just describe the absence of tuition fees. Um, it must also be free of profit-driven interests. Tuition fees are only one element in a more, co more uh, comprehensive process, which also results in an increasing de-democratization within universities and also significantly shapes the public discourse on education as a whole. So very often we see education um, being um, presented as, some, as, as something only concerning the individual and as something, um, as a personal investment. Um, so nowadays, education is often being seen as a personal investment to boost one's own human capital value, which one then invests on the labor market. This process is what we often refer to as the commercialization of education. And this can be uh, observed not just in Marburg or in Montreal, but around the world, be it in Dakar, New York, Johannesburg or Santiago, it's just everywhere. And the commercialization of education is itself also just part of a more comprehensive process, which is the commercialization of all aspects of our lives. So therefore, at least for us at the General Students Committee in Marburg and the Free Education Movement Marburg, it is clear that our struggle for free emancipatory education is directly linked with the struggle against the predominant economic system, which is responsible for the similar developments at universities and even schools uh, around the world. Okay, that's it for now. Um, I hope you were able to understand uh, most, at least most of the things I was trying to say, and I'm looking forward uh, to your questions. Bye.